Hello, happy Friday, everyone. Thank you for joining me tonight. Uh, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. And tonight I'm working some more on my splendid sampler quilt. I am quilting it uh, right now, so it's all made, just quilting some binding and we'll be done. It's going super fast, the quilting so far. So we did all the vertical lines the past couple of days and we're gonna start the horizontal lines. I'm stitching in the ditch, which basically means I'm stitching in the seam between each one of my blocks and it's going speedy Gonzalez. So I'm, I'm having a great time working on it. Um, it was nice to pick up this project again. I think uh, we'll just, you know, Keep speeding along with it. So, all right, I'm going to flip you around and we will get started for the night. Uh, if you're new, uh, again, I'm Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, and I'm here every night at 9.30 p.m. Central where we relax and craft. Uh, I won't be here over the weekend. I just do weeknights. And uh, yeah, let's get going, guys. So thanks for joining me tonight. Nice seeing you all pop in. I'm gonna flip you around and we'll get sewing. Okay, here we are. I flipped my quilt. I rotated it around. So I'm ready to start the horizontal line. So let's shimmy this all the way up. I got my, my grippets here. I am going to use those. I use the grippets instead of, my, instead of uh, gloves to help move my fabric along. All right, so I gotta get past the border here. Hope you guys are all having a nice Friday. We went for a nice long bike ride today and I don't think I have biked since last year. And honestly, now that I think of it, I'm not even sure that I biked last year either. <laughs> so this is the first bike ride in a long time. And my parents are here and they brought their bikes. So we got to just uh, cruise along and we biked to a yummy restaurant, ate some yummy food and biked home. But here we go. So like the grippets, they uh, have these rubber bottoms. So um, instead of just doing it without, uh, without anything, you know, my hands slide around quite a bit, but these really do grip well. And I don't have to wear the gloves with the little rubber bits on them. Um, so I'm not wearing gloves, which is awesome. And I can just pick these up and move them around. So, so far, really liking this purchase. Uh, this is, I think, the third time I'm using them, but I, I'm totally digging them. So stitching in the ditch tonight. Ooh, I'm sewing in shoes today, so that's kind of different for me. Do you guys ever sew in shoes or let me know or if, or do you always sew in socks or something else? Sometimes when I'm sewing barefoot I feel like my pedal gets too hot so I, I kind of like sewing in socks. Um, when I'm sewing in shoes like how I am now sometimes I just feel like I don't get a full feel of the pedal you know. Oh, you bought them, Rosalie! Awesome! Oh, I hope they come to you quick. You'll have to let me know, let me know how you like them. No shoes for you. Yeah, it's feeling weird, but I have, um, I have some high top converses on, and I know I'm gonna go outside again later, and it's just too much work to take off, so I'm sewing with, with shoes tonight. Not shoes, socks, or barefoot. Not shoes. Oh, not shoes. Socks or barefoot. I see what you're saying, Libby. Hi, Antoinette. Thanks for joining. All right, got to scooch this, the quilt along on this side. It's wanting to pull me down over there. So these rows, the horizontal rows, no shoes for you ever. Yeah, it's feeling weird for me tonight, but we're going to deal. Uh, we're doing the horizontal rows today, and there's one less block in each of the rows compared to the vertical rows but there's one more row to do so I don't know we'll probably finish pretty close to the same amount of time as the other ones I'm thinking I'm 
Maybe this will take three sessions instead of two. I'm not sure. I might call it a little early night tonight, so we might just go for a half hour tonight. Just because it's the last day that my parents are here, and I think we're going to hang out by the fire and play some cribbage or something tonight yet. But it is always nice to come and see you guys, and it's always nice to get farther on a project, that's for sure. It just, you know, it feels so good working on the Splendid Sampler again. Uh, there was a little anxiety when I, uh, when I stopped working on it to work on um, some of our other projects. I was a little afraid I would never come back to it, but, uh, but we are now, so I feel feeling good. All right, we are almost done with row one here. This is uh, just such a fast and easy way to quilt. I mean, it's nothing fancy. It's definitely not, you know, we're not machine or we're not a free motion quilting or anything, but you know, it does the job. We're, we're attaching all the layers. Uh, it will stay together. It will hopefully wear the test of time and we'll be good. So I'm going to just snip right at the edge here. And you know, this is from the other direction. I might as well snip that while I'm here. And we will just keep pushing it out the side of the border here. We got a kind of a big border on this, this guy. All right. And then snip the bobbin. We'll come back and snip all the backs of that, of the bobbin really well. All right, let's do another row. Oh, I suppose we should start, as I do this, let's start rolling, rolling this up as we go. So it's not a huge, crazy bunch later. Lot of border to deal with. I think the border, what, what did we do? I think it's 16 inches, or like, I think the big border is maybe 14 inches, and then the little border is like one and a half inches. So quite a bit of border to deal with. All right, let's keep rolling up. Hopefully this is a good idea. I don't know. Getting it done early. No, oh, I forgot about this one. Got all the little, little snaps on there. Buttons, but to look like the uh, closure of a bag. It'd be a shame not to get the quilt finished after you spent so much time on the top. I hear you, Debbie. I know. That's why I was getting so anxious. I'm like, oh my gosh, I have all this quilting to go on it. And how am I going to get it done? And when am I going to get it done? Uh, but luckily, I mean, this stitching in the ditch has been really fast so far. Like it only took two sessions, like two, you know, hour-ish long sessions here in the evenings to do all of the vertical stitching. So I think it'll just take maybe three sessions to do these, the horizontal stitching here. Uh, and then, and then the border. And I think the border will go pretty quick too. I'm going to do straight line stitching, but I think I'm going to put, I think the straight line stitchings are going to be about this far apart. I think this is like one and a half inches or it's, it might be two inches. So just two inch gaps. Uh, for the border. So that shouldn't take forever either. I'm not doing like quarter inch straight line stitching or anything. So I think, I think all in all, it won't take forever. So we are starting a new project though on August 7th, uh, the Jacqueline Steves I Love Home quilt along block of the month. So, uh, so that means I will be stopping this again at that point. So we'll, we'll just, this'll be like what we do in between projects. But who knows, maybe we'll crank this out before August 7th, but I, I kind of doubt it. I think we'll have a little bit of time. Oh, this is why I feel funny. Don't have my grippets moving things along. Here we go. Get these guys back. No shoes, you dropped your 12 and a half inch ruler. Oh, the point hit your toe. Oh man. <gasps> Wish you'd be wearing shoes. Oh, that's funny. Soon you'll have to wear like steel toed socks or something. Wacky. Yeah, I bet you that would hurt though, dropping, dropping a ruler onto your foot. Ugh. Oh man, it was so fun biking today. 
And my husband bikes a lot and he was so nice. He brought us on all the like back roads and stuff. We didn't have to go on any main roads at all. I, I just don't like biking by cars and stuff. So, and then we got to a lake where we get a bike. It's, there's a bike path around it and got some yummy food. It was a swell day, that's for sure. Oh, remember this one? I still really like this one. I like this this uh, kind of dark blue and then this more teal blue. It's fun looking at all the blocks again. What will be more fun is when it's on my bed. Uh, Kim, they are from Sewing Mates. So sewingmates.com. I think I have a link in my Facebook post here. I can't quite remember, but uh, Sewing Mates, here it is again, sewingmates.com uh, is, is where you can find them. But uh, it's just like a neat little invention that they made. It's a small, uh, small business and, you know, they didn't like the gloves, so they made, made these instead and they're great. And what's nice is they, they have the curve and they have the straight edge. So when you're, when you're uh, machine, uh, machine quilting, or not machine, free motion quilting, you can use this as straight edges or you can use it as an arc uh, if you're working on, you know, your free motion quilting. So I'm, I haven't tried that yet. That's gonna be uh, when we work on the chevron quilt. So we'll be doing that at some point here. Uh, the chevron, I, oh wait, what was the name of that? Charming Chevrons Quilt by uh, Christy Quilts. Uh, we'll be working on that at some point here coming up too, once we finish the block of the month. And that quilt is going to be my, my practice quilt for free motion quilting. It's, it's a pretty chevron, so we'll make all these cute little chevrons. And I think in each chevron stripe, I want to try a different, a different free motion quilting design or, you know, just practice. So, you know, I'll practice the squirrels on this one and then the next one I'll pra practice like little squares or something or I don't know. We'll see. I'm not sure how that will go just because I've never really done much free motion quilting. I just purchased a free motion foot, a darning foot basically. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm excited to I'm excited to delve into the world of quilting even more. <laughs> this quilt, the Splendid Sampler quilt here, kind of uh, upped my quilting game quite a bit, I think. So now I wanna up it even more, or it upped my piecing game, I guess. Uh, and I wanna, I think it's time to up the free motion quilting game. Keeping on moving the moving the uh, quilt up. Just a few more in this row, and we will start the next. But I can tell, like over here, all the um, the weight of the quilt on the table is holding me up a little here. But that's why the grippets are kind of nice. I can still kind of push and guide everything through. I really like this one yet where we sewed all those little circles. This this one I did towards the end when I got a whole lot better at the needle turn uh, applique. I think those circles circles turned out a lot better than they would have if that was my first first block. So they're currently doing if you haven't started the splendid sampler, they're currently doing um, the second round of the splendid sampler quilt, which is this quilt, these blocks. And each of the block is made by a different designer. Um, but they're, they're doing, uh, this right now over at thesplendidsampler.com. And I think I have a link to that in, in this Facebook post too. But yeah, so if you like any of these blocks, they are all over there. Uh-oh. That's not going through. There we go. Just a thick area. This is a whole pile of, um, little pieces of fabric and I think it just got a little thick there. So one thing we gotta watch for is my bobbin thread. I think we've stitched quite a bit and I'm thinking my bobbin thread might get pretty, pretty slim here soon. All right, done with that row. 
Grab my little scissors again. I'm just pulling it, you know, so I have a nice distance away so it doesn't, so it's not too short, so it doesn't come out of the needle. Snipping it. And then let's just go across the border. And we'll snip, just snip the bobbin thread. All right. Row three coming up. Again, I'm going to kind of roll my fabric up a little bit more as I get back to the top. Oh, look, we can start seeing the back now. The back I did all improv patchwork, and you can start seeing the quilting going through there. So that's kind of fun. I'm excited to see how, how that all turns out. All right, getting this all in my lap again. So I think this time we'll do kind of what we did yesterday. Once I get halfway through, I think I'll start from the other side. I'll just rotate it all around and start from the other side. Otherwise, this roll will just get way too big in here. Too big in the neck of my machine. I don't think my, my little machine can, can handle all that. Did I do this one? Yeah. All right. Next up. Right here. And if you were doing a show quilt, like, I don't know, one of those quilt shows where every little stitch gets judged and every little seam has to be perfect and whatever. If you're entering one of those, then you don't want to do a little back tack to start your row. You want to just start your row and leave long strings. And then when you're done, you are going to tie a small little knot and you are going to weave in all of those seams or right, all those strings. That's, that is the uh, show quilt way of doing it, but I'm fine with just doing a little back tack. Back tacking is just, you know, you go forward once and then back once and then forward. Again, that just is, it's almost like tying a knot with your sewing machine. So, uh, so your seam doesn't start to come out. See, this arc almost here is almost like, uh, like the circle here. So I could quilt kind of around that and use, use this arc as a guide. You need the metal Bike pant clips. What are those? They are the they the old fabric. Oh, they hold the fabric really well in a long roll. Like you have the right. Oh, interesting. Bike pant clips. Oh, well, I will be going to a bike shop in the next couple days. Uh, it's my husband's birthday is coming up, and we need new bike helmets. So I think we might go there. Um, to get new bike helmets, so I will have to look for that. So it just kind of clips around, clips around the bundle here. I might have to try that out, Janet. Huh. If it keeps this roll nice and tight so it fits in my machine better, that would be swell. Huh. Gonna have to try that out. I'll see, I'm, I'm sure they have that there. At that bike shop, we'll see. This one too was pretty scary. We started at the, um, the uh, needle turn applique, but uh, towards the end we got better and better. Like with each leaf, you can see it getting better. So that, that was kind of nice. It's nice to see improvement. This is definitely a, uh, a learning, uh, learning quilt for me. Oh, you bought yours on Amazon. Couldn't find them at your bike store. Oh, okay, well that's interesting. I will, I will look into that for sure. And they just wrap around the little roll, or, or how do they, how do, how do they stay there? Do they just kind of clamp shut like this, and there's like a little opening, or, or I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to picture how, how that would function. But I will, I'll do a little Google search for it, or an Amazon search. I'll see it if, if they're at our local bike shop, and then, oh, so they do, they kind of clamp like that. Oh, oh, I could totally see how that would 
be nice for for the little fabric roll. Huh. I'll uh I'll check our our local shop first and then then Amazon. Yeah, we were actually at the bike shop today. Um, my husband, when we were biking for our long bike ride today, his chain broke uh, with a few miles left to get home. So, and we didn't have an extra chain. So he had to kind of scooter his way home on the bike. And then we're like, oh, dang, we should probably have some repair kit stuff with us when we bike. So we went to the bike shop. And... Uh, we're kind of in need for new helmets, and they had some helmets there on sale. So I think we will we'll head over there, head over there this week, and then I'll look I'll look for those pant leg things. Bikers use them around their ankles so their pants don't get in the spokes, huh? So they just clamp around. That's kind of awesome. Better than having to put your whole like foot in or something. So yeah, that would totally work for this little uh, this little roll of fabric I got going here. Huh. Interesting. I love learning the new gadgets. This has been the gadget learning quilt too, for sure. I mean, I love that you can you can definitely sew and quilt without all the gadgets, and I love that about it. Um, and I don't want people to be so scared and think that they need all of the gadgets but they do make life easier, especially when you know why you're using them and, and you've experienced what it's like to not use them. Then they get real fun. All right, another row done. I think this is going awfully quick. It feels a lot faster than the last, uh, than last night, but I think it's because, you know, our roll isn't giant yet. It's not so cumbersome quite yet like it probably will get as we move along here. Oh, here you can see, you can see my, uh, my vertical lines. Wow, that guy's not straight. Ah, I'm thinking a whole lot of this is not straight, but it does the job and that's what I'm going for right now. These blues I really, really like together still. Okay, back to the top. Let's get these threads off to the side. Here, let me get a little better situated. I don't know if you guys can see, see the foot very well. There we go. No, I don't think I can have that so far. Yeah, the bike clip idea. Well, if I do get get some of those, I will for sure show you guys how that turns out. All right. Get the griffets back. What's nice about these two is that I can really kind of spread out what I'm doing here. Um, like this is kind of a little bunchy and stuff, so I can, I can really get it flat. You know, I can get real close, close here too. All right, I gotta straighten out a little here. Okay. Yeah, I could see how those bike clips could work because then my roll would stay tight. I mean, right now it's kind of undoing it a little, doing it, undoing itself a little bit while I sew here. Ooh, we're getting stuck over here. There we go. Now I think we're getting stuck on this side. Too much quilt to move along. Make sure they're the metal ones. Okay. Oh, good. I, I'm, I, thanks, Marie. I am appreciate, appreciate that. The metal ones. So make sure that the bike clamps are the metal ones. Okay. Huh. I have not... I, I can imagine them, like based on what you're saying and how I can imagine them functioning. So I have a, a, a picture in my head, but I, I'm kind of curious if that's close to reality. So I will, 
I'll uh, I'll give it a little Amazon search tonight and then see if see if they have those at my local shop later this week. But yeah, I can see those really being helpful. And I'm you know I'm working on more quilts now, so I can see I can see using it in the future. So it might be a good good little investment. Oh man, yep, when I get about this far down the quilt, then it starts just getting bulky on the table. Like it just doesn't want to move anymore. Yep, stopping more definitely to move things along. What do you call what do you call what you're using instead of the gloves? Oh, they are uh, they are grippets and they're by if you go to sewingmates.com, uh, that's that's where to find them. They're a new new to me product. I just saw them there and I'm like, oh, this'll work. This'll work super well. Yeah, they have kind of like a um what's that called where it's all kind of ridged? Um I forget like in metal. So it's got like little rubber bottoms there. And then these little, these little tops, they're a little 3D a little bit. So you can really, you can just bump your fingers against them and it'll, it'll move. So I don't know, totally digging it. And I, I do have a link in my, uh, in my post here, the Facebook post to the, uh, to the website. And I think, I, I think they're right on the homepage somewhere. Lost my scissors there. All right, scooch it all forward. That oh, we're almost to the end of this one. Two more, two more squares here. Ooh, I better start watching for bobbin too. Am I still sewing? Yeah, I'm still sewing. Good. <laughs> oh, it would suck to do a whole row and then um, realize I had no bobbin thread. Yeah, you can see using these over the gloves. Yeah, I um, I like the idea of being able to stretch. Yeah, the little stretch. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to stretch it like this with your gloves because your gloves would just like kind of rotate out. And I just. I have never found gloves that fit me, like, ever. I mean, I have really little fingers, so they always go, like, a quarter inch at least beyond my fingers, and, oh my god, that would be enough for me to not want a quilt, I think, wearing, wearing gloves that don't fit. So, I'm liking these. And I, you know, I can move around, I can stop and, you know, not have gloves on. And they really do. I mean, they really are gripping on here, so it's it's nice. They're kind of equivalent to those uh, True Grips, those little stickers at the bottom of um, that I put on my rulers for the Splendid Sampler. They're kind of like that, but for but for quilting. I like it. Yeah, I know. And wearing your hands getting hot. I know with gloves. Yeah, I mean, right now I'm I'm like sweating here, just. Sit, just having this quilt on me, you know? I mean, you already have a quilt laying on you, and now you want to put gloves on, too? Oof. In 90-degree weather. <laughs> yeah, that would be unpleasant, for sure. All right, next row. So I think I might just do one or two more rows tonight. Oh, you like my house block? Oh, thanks so much, Sue. Um... I might just do one or two more rows tonight because it's the last day that my family's in town and, I, and I'm going to go hang out with them for the rest of the evening. So I think we're actually almost, uh, we're approaching halfway almost, I think. Um, eh, maybe not quite, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll pick this up again on Monday for sure. So again, not doing this this weekend. Uh, so on Monday... We will, maybe, maybe we'll get the rest of the row done. 
or the rest of these horizontal rows. If not, we'll start on Tuesday. Oh, Tuesday. I may not be on on, on Tuesday. Uh, it is my husband's birthday on Tuesday. So uh, uh, it might just be Monday. We've been like, I know I've been super sporadic this, this summer, but you know, that'll, it's summer. That'll, that'll get more normal again soon. Uh, but yeah, so on Tuesday, I probably will not be on. And uh, so we'll be back on on Wednesday of next week. So two, so I'll be on Monday and I'll be on Wednesday and then for the rest of the week as well. Just, just not Tuesday. And then I think the week after that is going to be a little, a little weird too. We will start on the 7th, August 7th. We will start the Jacqueline Steves I Love Home Block of the Month Club. And I will send a newsletter out about that too. So if you guys are on my newsletter, I know our birthdays are super close. We got good summer birthdays. Uh, they're within a month of each other. But yeah, so I will be sending a newsletter out. Uh, if you're not on my newsletter, if you go to penguinandfish.com, you can get on my newsletter there. And I, I think I have a link to it here. You also get a free embroidery pattern for signing up. But I will have more info on the Jacqueline Steves Block of the Month project coming up. Uh, and I'll also have some info on the... Craft a Happy Life Embroidery Kit pattern that we will be working on, too. Kind of in tandem with that. Uh, and that's the kit that's on all, that's on my postcard that I, that I send out. And that a lot of you have seen when we worked on, worked on the Splendid Sampler project, too. So check your inboxes, uh, probably, I don't know, maybe this weekend yet. Monday at the latest. All right, this is about the point where it starts getting bulky and doesn't want to move anymore. So just stopping more to move it along. Yeah, we're both the only summer birthdays in our, in our families. I like having a summer birthday, but we never got to, neither of us got to bring, you know, in elementary school where when it's your birthday, you got to bring like cupcakes or something to class. You got to bring candy or, you know, you got to bring something to class on your birthday, some food, some, you know, fancy birthday, something. Neither of us ever got to bring anything for our birthdays to school, but ah oh well. But I remember that being a thing that I never, I was never going to be able to bring anything on my birthday. All right, a couple more blocks. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Susan. Um, you know, they're mostly lining up because of doing that nesting the seams where each of the, oh, happy birthday to your daughter, Carol, um, where each of your rows are pressed, you know, row one is pressed like to the right, row two is pressed to the left, row three to the right, you know, four to the left, uh, doing that alternative, um, alternating where the seam allowance goes. Then when you sew them together, they nest together and the nesting of the seams makes like these nice points. But you know, so they were matching up real nice, but I'm also clipping a pile of corners and everything along the way. So I mean, you know, like I'm not, like look at all these corners are getting totally clipped by, by sewing it to match up the, the corners, but yeah. Unless you have sewn absolutely perfectly in line, perfect size, perfect everything blocks, you know, they'll probably clip a few, clip a few, a few points. But not worried about that. And even if the blocks don't all match up, you will still end up with a nice quilt to lay under. <laughs> All right, that's that. 
back attack. I think I'm gonna do one more tonight. I, I'm still, I'm, I'm feeling it. I wanna, I wanna get as far as this as I can. Oop, get a little higher there. Scissors. You're probably getting pretty far on yours, aren't you, Susan? Or do you do you have all the blocks done now? Can't remember. All right. Tight. Okay. Sometimes this gets loose, but I think I tightened it pretty well this time. I am using 50 weight thread. Um, I'm actually using this Gutterman thread. I I um I didn't have any orofill of this color. So I got this, but it is still, I think it's still 50 weight. Oh, you know what, actually, oh yeah, so I'm, I'm guessing, I'm guessing it's 50 weight. So that's like the Aurofil stuff. Uh, you know, it, it should be the same weight that we are um, doing for the rest of it, that, that 50 weight Aurofil. And I mean, you could use thicker stuff. I'm just trying to have mine kind of blend in with the rest, so I'm using a little thinner thread. Oh, you have 30 done. Oh, 70 more to go. You'll get it done, Susan. I know, let's hope my bobbin hole's there. That's a good point. Maybe we'll make it through uh, one more row. If not, that seems like a good good time to quit, right? When you run out of bobbin. <laughs> if we run out of bobbin, I'm calling it. Actually, you know what? I probably won't. If, if we run out of bobbin on this row, I'll throw another bobbin in and finish the row. It'll be annoying to be in the middle of, middle of the row. I think that'd be worse than, you know going through putting in a new bobbin in. I do have a pile of bobbins already wound. So I was smart enough there uh, predicting that I would run out of bobbin at some point and did a few more. Oh man, Pam, Pam you just have to put the, the binding on yours. Nice. I am itching to get to that point because I, I love, I love that point. To me, the quilt is good as done. Uh, when you are at the point to put the, the binding on. That's like the last step. You are finishing it off. You are making everything look super pretty and perfect at that point. Last step. I love it. My favorite part, putting on the binding. I love getting like those perfectly mitered corners and I love hand stitching it on the back. I don't know, I just dig it. I could put bindings on quilts all day. I really like it. I like doing it by hand too, Pam, where you sew it onto the front and then flip it to the back and then hand stitch it to the back. That's, that's how I'm gonna do this one. And I have my, my binding made already. So we did the strips and sewed the strips together and pressed it in half and we've done all that. So thank goodness, cause I don't want to cra uh, crack out the fabric again and have to do that. You love binding too? It's so funny. Binding is such a love-hate thing. You either really love it or you can't stand it. There's not really any middle ground or I haven't, I haven't heard about any middle ground on, on that debate yet. Oh, check the bobbin. I gotta keep, keep looking back there. Oh man, now I'm paranoid. Well, I'm sure if we um, don't run out of bobbin tonight, since I think this is gonna be my last row for the evening, uh, if we don't finish the bobbin tonight, I'm thinking it might be uh, it might be Monday. <laughs> Who knows? Or maybe not, maybe I can just, maybe just so much thread fits, so much 50 weight, because the 50 weight is so thin, maybe just so much thread fits on this bobbin that I don't know, we'll be cruising on this bobbin forever. I wound three bobbins in preparation for, for quilting this and who knows, maybe I'll only need like two. Then I'll have like a pre-wound bobbin for something else, I guess. Don't know. I'm thinking even though I'm gonna do a little wider uh, Stitching for my straight line stitching in the border. I, I'm still thinking that'll take a bunch of thread up. You greatly dislike so I mean, hand sewing the binding on. Oh, funny! And had a friend tack my sleeve on a quilt tray. And oh, funny. Yep, you're right. There's no middle ground. <laughs> you either really enjoy it or you really can't stand it. It's just just kind of funny. I 
haven't done much machine binding, uh, but we did that for the the hourglass quilt that we just finished here. And that is pretty slick. I mean, you do get the job done quick, uh, machine sewing it on. So I don't know. I might be forming a little bit of a, a likeness to a love for that. Ooh, I keep forgetting to check, check behind me. Um, but bobbin's still going strong. But yeah, so I can see if I start doing a lot more quilts or like if I start doing a bunch of baby quilts or something, I can totally see just starting to, you know, machine bind some of that on. But I do like sitting on the couch and having a blanket on me and hand stitching the binding on and just seeing it develop as a finished product. I, I just like it. Very zen, I guess. Some zen hand stitching, for me at least. It's not fun to do under a deadline. If you really need to get a quilt done, then hand stitching can be a little stressful. All right, this is it. We still have bobbin. So, awesome! I think we will uh, call it here. This is going so fast though. I mean, we are just cranking, oh, let's cut that first. We're just cranking this uh, quilting out by just doing this stitch in the ditch. Oh gosh, I was so crooked on the end there, but <laughs> oh well. Whole pile of crookedness I'm thinking in this quilt. So let's just trim this the bobbin thread quick. All right, let's see, how many more rows do we have over here to do yet? So one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, we're at the halfway point right now, I think, because I think there's 11, 11 rows. So if you count, you know, the ends, then I think that's 12, right? Yeah, so 12 and we only have six left. One, two, three, four, Five, six, yeah, we are right at the halfway point. So we are going even faster, faster on this. Uh, how can you tell if you're not having wrinkles on the back? Um, so far, we have been really good on the back. I don't think we're having much of any wrinkles. So here you can start seeing, you know, some of our squares starting to develop on the back here. And you know what? I really honestly think it's I think it's from the grip it's really to be able to hold, you know, and hold kind of pull the area that you're that you're working on so you got a nice flat surface. I I honestly think that's really helping a lot with not having puckers on the back cuz I did do a little bit of a search uh yesterday and it is it's looking good. Oh, this is all border here, but um you know, we got our squares going. So here I don't know if you can tell on the camera here, but yeah, so this is one of our blocks. You can see see the squares and I don't think we have many puckers or, or any puckers really so I don't know I'm claiming it's the grip it's right now or maybe we just really pinned it well I don't know but it's it's looking good it's not looking like there's anything anything like that on the back so you know what uh, so next time I'm going to flip this around and we will start I think I'll start from the middle and then work work my way out since it, since we are exactly halfway done here so, all right, that seems like a good place to stop. Um, I am going to flip you around and we will call it an evening. Oop. There we go. All right, and you know, just so you can see like in person, these are how, how big the grippets are. So they're not, they're not that, you know, they're nice and small. I mean, they fit, I have a very small hand and they, they fit really well and I can just rest my hand on top and move it or you can grab it. You know, you can grip the sides of it. It's a nice kind of like thick, thick acrylic. I'm digging them. I think they're around $32, but you know, they're kind of awesome. And you can use it as a little ruler guide and a little arc guide as well. Um, you know, I'm still, I'm just a beginner in quilting land, but I can tell just to be able to hold down. And I'm telling you, I don't want to wear those gloves. So, uh, yeah, check out, I think it, it's sewingmates.com and they should have them on there. I think you can see them right on the, on the website there. And I'm not affiliated with them or anything. I'm just, I'm just digging them so far. So my new, uh, favorite product right now. And, uh, yeah, 
especially if you're doing a lot of quilting, I think it'll be it'll be nice. And we'll see how they work on the free motion quilting. I'm going to do that on the the uh, quilt we'll have coming up, the, the Charming Chevrons quilt. So awesome. Yes, so close to being finished with this, Sue. I am I am excited for it. And uh, yeah, we'll crank on this again on Monday. I think we'll have this actually, we'll have this middle section done on Monday. So on, on Wednesday, when we come back after Monday, we'll be doing border work. We might have this done before the seventh, before our next project. That would be pretty amazing. So, all right, guys, I will get this up on YouTube for you right now. And uh, again, check out the links, uh, the sewing mates, and uh, I'll have a newsletter going out soon. So get on my website, penguinandfish.com and sign up to the newsletter there. Uh, I'll have more information on the I Love Home Jacqueline Steves Block of the Month project and a few other projects coming up and a sale. Uh, so awesome. Have a great evening, guys. I will catch you on Monday. Good night.